Clinging to the edge of Indonesia, the remote Mentawai Islands are the hottest new location for a booming global business. But while western surfers carve up these classic breaks, in some places on shore, many of the children don't live to five years old. There's a very high infant mortality rate here. We know that in the worst areas, four out of six children will die. New Zealand doctor Dave Jenkins came to the Mentawais in search of good times and perfect waves. The blues playing surfer found both. Ten years ago, no one rode these waves. Now surfers come in their thousands at hundreds of dollars a day on a flotilla of luxury boats. It's expensive, but with uninterrupted Indian Ocean swells hitting the reefs to perfection, the Mentawais are now truly on the map as one of the great wave meccas of the world. Originally, Dave took up surfing to escape the pressures of medical studies, then a high-paying health job in Singapore. Surfing here was the ultimate getaway, until he stepped foot on land. One morning I took my medical bag into the village after having a great surf and a great lunch, and, and we had a, an overwhelming response. Literally, children with malaria and families wasting away with tuberculosis, and a woman semi-conscious brought to me in a wheelbarrow, and... So we had a couple of burly surfers who were fighting back the tears and it was quite a, a major experience really. It was that afternoon that I decided that I wouldn't be able to live with my conscience sailing away with, from people who were dying. Largely forgotten by Indonesia's under-resourced health authorities, the problems here are as basic as they are deadly. Diseases the West has long left behind through simple immunisation. No one's really uh, in whole mental islands been able to source the exact causes of death, especially in these forest villages where, where there are very high infant mortality rates. We're talking measles, polio, tetanus. Um, tuberculosis and malaria. Those are the five, uh, are five big killing, killers. Killing kids up in this area. Killing kids. Dave has spent the past 18 months travelling through the islands, trying to determine the real health situation and work out a way to help. Nama. Nama, Nama, William. William. William, you? Gaijat. Gaijat. Okay, Aluita. Gaijat. <laughs> David. Dave. But as soon as they hear there's a doctor in the village, they gather. <laughs> this young girl suffers from a chronic infection that could easily turn septic and potentially deadly. So, um, for now, it's patch-up medicine, but at least it will relieve this little one. Yeah, that's right. She's probably really irritable. And, you know, chronic, really nasty infection like that. So what we're going to do is make up a bottle of this medicine in one of our water bottles and that it will get them through till the nurse gets back and she'll need, all of them will need more antibiotics um, when the nurses get back from the clinic from Moana, if they get back. Hidden away in their huts are some who are so sick they can barely walk. Yanto, can you ask her to breathe in and out through her mouth? Just big breaths in and out. Although hard to believe by looking at her, Susanna is just 29. 
The mother of four has been battling TB and now pneumonia while still breastfeeding her youngest child, a seven-month-old baby. She has um, had tuberculosis and now I think she's got a rapid decline in that all her lungs have got infection. She's seriously, seriously ill and at, at risk of dying. The real tragedy is that Susanna's TB is treatable with a course of antibiotics that just aren't available here. Um, I don't know what percentage, but a high, very high percentage of these people have, have TB. So, I mean, we will celebrate the day when the tuberculosis vaccine comes. But this is treatable. Isolated and living largely as they have for centuries, the Mentawai Islanders simply haven't been told about the basic hygiene that could save so many of their lives. So lacking is basic treatment, people of all ages are dying unnecessarily. He's probably the source of the tuberculosis. Okay. But Dr Dave has a plan. It's called Surf Aid and its aim is simple. To tap the now booming surf industry for money to set up a local health network to move health care for these people beyond random acts of kindness. It's time to repay a debt of gratitude from surfing. There's a lot of uh, money being made out there, there's a lot of corporate marketing and I think that uh, surfing can do this. I think it would be a fantastic thing for the Mentawi people to be adequately um, funded, if you like, or given the gift of knowledge of health from surfing. And I, I like that idea. This medication will not cure her tuberculosis. She may feel better tomorrow even. We'll come and check. Surrounded by the symbols of their jungle spirits, Mentawai medicine men dance to 10,000-year-old rhythms. Here, the body is decorated to keep the soul from leaving. If it does, illness prevails, and the people turn to the forest herbs and secret spirit songs known only to these shaman. But the onslaught of modern disease is overpowering the shaman's ancient knowledge, and even at times themselves. So he's got bronchitis in his whole lungs and fluid on the bottom of his lungs. So he's got a mixed picture. So he's got um, chronic bronchitis from his smoking. He could well have a bit of tuberculosis, and uh, but his main problem is the bronchitis mixed with a little bit of heart failure. Not too serious. Right, yeah. But these are not men blinded by their beliefs. They know they need help. And Chief Shaman Sigulo makes a simple plea. The next morning, it's with some trepidation, we return to check on the condition of Susanna. She looks better to me today, a lot better, um, which is amazing, considering it's 12 hours since we... She's a bit better. She's been drinking. Yeah, it makes us so much difference. But she, as we told you yesterday, she was very close. So um, being a lot better is still seriously ill, seriously sick. I would still prefer her to be in hospital, if at all possible. We still need to take her down to the clinic and get her on tuberculous drugs.
With as yet little funding, the costs of emergency treatment versus prevention make for hard decisions. Well, this is just a constant dilemma for us we increasingly face. Any village we go with the thought of introducing a preventative program like immunisation for children or malaria control, we face this problem where, where there are always people who are seriously ill and at risk of dying. And the problem for us, we have so small resources, we must make a call. And I can't walk away from this, this lady, so we have to um, do all we can for her. It'll probably cost us 300 something like that US dollars to give her life. Now I could probably um, protect around 50 or 60 children from malaria for three years with an impregnated net for that, to reduce the intensity of their malaria. So these are really hard decisions, I wish I didn't have to make them, but you know, we're here to help. We, we, we can save this girl's life, this woman's life, and she's got four young children. So, you know, we can't walk away from the situation. So Susanna must come with us three hours downstream to her only hope, a clinic with the drugs to save her life. For subsistence farmers who earn little, if any, cash, it's a trip they normally just couldn't afford to make. Some people might look at this and say, well, you know, this is all very well and you're very well-meaning, but isn't it up to the government? Isn't it up to other people? Isn't there a structure here to take care of these people? But you can say that about the world. We're here to pay a debt of gratitude to the Mentawi people for using their reefs and waterways. And um, we're trying to, and we're achieving, to do that in a structured, professional way. Back on the coast, some of the world's richest surfers catch their dream waves. Most are totally unaware of the health crisis just a few metres away on shore, but some want the surf industry to do more. I would like to see that a percentage of, of the boat fare goes to, to the economy here, to, to helping, helping the people with medicine. So far, Surf Aid has received only a couple of donations from surfing corporates. The 30 boats now operating here earn millions of dollars from international surfers, and to date, funding a medical charity has not been a priority. Do you think uh, so surfing as an industry and surfers generally have a social conscience? Do you think that's what you're battling against them? I think partly. I, 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 surfing is a... They're a very mixed bunch of people. I think surfing started as a sort of soulful thing you did with your mates, and it's quite clearly become a major industry. But if you look within the industry, there are people who started in a garage and started in a, in a van, and, and they're good people, and they, you know, they, uh, they've been creative, they've worked hard, and I'd, I'll be surprised if they don't want to be part of this. They're certainly welcome to be part of it. Mm. But while he waits for the surfing industry to see the light, Dave plies his barefoot doctoring where he can. And not just with treatment, he's also trying to set up programs of preventative health care. How's it been going? Very well, Matt. I won't kiss you, Heather. Hello. Hey, Sidney. In villages like Talaleo, Surf Aid has teamed up with Indonesia's Malaria Control Board. Hello, Namaste, Dave. The aim, to first find out the numbers of children with the malaria parasite in their blood. And the news from this village is typically grim. 80% of the children here have malaria, making this one of the worst places in the world for the debilitating disease. Okay, finish. Hmm. And also, some of these kids get very anemic. Uh, from the malaria, like I say, it blows up their red cells. So we check for anemia, and this is a problem. See, he's the anemia. See, look how much blood I've got circulating around in my... Look how pale his hand is compared to mine. So he hasn't got... His red cells have been blown up by the malaria parasite. What happens is the, the different types of malaria, but this is typical. They get anemic, 
Then they get another infection, perhaps a chest infection, and they get a pneumonia, and they die. For just a few dollars each, Dave could install enough mosquito nets to prevent much of the malaria crippling these children. And for a small fraction of the surf industry's profits, this surfing Samaritan could immunise many of the children here against unnecessary deaths. We're at a very critical crossover point now where we're really, as you saw, we're rolling out our programs and we'll, there'll be a couple of thousand kids immunised this year and there'll be a drastic reduction in malaria in that village in the next 12 months as a result. And we'd like them to join in. I think this would be a fantastic thing for people to be involved in. An optimist with a clear commitment to his Hippocratic Oath, Dave really believes even one act of giving can make a difference. He just wants a few others to help out. OK, that's yours, my friend. You are the harmonica player. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, 